Well, our next report is about e-taxis that are fast becoming the easiest job alternative for youth in Lagos and Abuja. Although these e-taxis have reduced the unemployment rate in Lagos, there are concerns that the safety of these drivers may not be guaranteed, especially as the once lucrative business leaves much to be desired for its partners. In this Sunday special, Sarah Yeku takes a look at the gains and pain of the e-hailing drivers. Lagos is not only Nigeria's busiest city, it is also West Africa's commercial capital. It is a city of striking contrast, one of which is that Lagosians are well awake even before dawn. Actually, some say, like Las Vegas, it is a city that never sleeps. Everyone is in a hurry almost all the time, and traffic gridlocks are a feature. Alternatives to conventional transportation are fast coming into the picture. It's a revolution that is not only changing the face of transport, but has also defined the identity for those who would have rejected the name driver just a few years ago. At the heart of the new system is technology, a global phenomenon that has reinvented intracity travel the world over. You can call it ride sharing, which was the initial idea, or you just call them e-taxes. In 2016, Uber, one of the e-alien companies in Nigeria, described Lagos as being potentially bigger than the London market. That's not far from the truth. The e-alien sector is a very lucrative um, sector. It is a, um, let me call it an honey war. Uh, it is a platform whereby most of the Nigerian youth, I mean most undergraduates that are unemployed, graduates that are unemployed, eh? many people have been able to, you know, you know, to tap into the business that have been engaged one way or the other. With a network of about 9,000 active driver partners and over 267,000 passengers registered, earnings vary for drivers on a CT-to-CT -CT basis. All seems not to be well between the app companies and the drivers, as there are complaints that the driver partners are now making less than expected. The profit margin on the ride for a driver varies based on his expenses. These expenses include insurance, car lease payment, toll, permit fee, fuel, vehicle maintenance, and personal upkeep. What we earn is not sacrosanct. It depends on how you work. You know, it's pay as you go. You can decide to come out in the morning, you can decide to come out in the afternoon, you can come out, decide to come out, you have the control. You have control over the job. So what I make is not fist. This job was very lucrative. Open, that people ha quit, had to quit their jobs. Yeah, if you if you go online and you, and you hear them, you hear them do adverts online. You hear them say things like, "You make 120,000 naira in a week," which is possible. Which it was possible before now. You were, you could you could make up to 100,000, 120,000 naira in one week. You could make up to 150,000 naira in one week when the fares were okay. But not right now when you have ridiculous fares everywhere. This is Ale Biosho Coyote on a typical work day. The clock is ticking, but he has to stop to gauge his tires for the journey ahead. Okay. Apart from operators having to deliver about 30 to 40,000 Naira every week to vehicle owners, these drivers get to experience what they call the good, bad and life-threatening experiences. All the security measures and the privacy policies talks about the personal data of the driver. And they follow this to the latter. From a driver's license, making sure it's an original one, the vehicle you are using, all the particulars of the vehicle, making sure that okay, even if the driver cannot be traced, the particulars of the vehicle can make it easier for the driver to be traced through the owner of the car. But now, the other side of the coin, the riders molesting drivers, the riders blackmailing drivers, the riders even maiming drivers and still seeking for damages. Then the ultimate price, the riders, the unscrupulous ones, 
who already had intention have been issued to go and kill drivers, to kidnap drivers, to you know, to 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 steal cars away from the, from the drivers. They can't trace them. Only with this incident is still is still taking everybody by surprise because um, uh, 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 it was attacked around Ipori. That's very close to Costain. Sustained gun bullets all over him, and till date we are still looking for oh, who really did this. One of my very good friends, a colleague too, somewhere in phase one, we just find him lying dead in the gutter. They had, they had removed essential part of his body. They about dropped his cuffs inside there. And the interesting part was his phone wasn't stolen, his money wasn't stolen. They just left him and left the cuffs in the drainage. So when you look at the security challenges we are facing as drivers itself, we are more exposed to the dangers especially those who, who drive at night. The e-ailing business is big in Nigeria, but returns to operators remain low for a number of reasons. There is no framework for government regulation. In any climb in the world, with the level of investment in terms of treasure and blood that the driver partner has done, that sort of sharing split is, constitutes an unfair trade practice. So I told them to come in so we could sit around the table look at all the issues together so we can negotiate a better deal for our people and also see to issues of safety. They haven't, be, they haven't come back. So what I've decided to do is, like I pronounce here, we'll send out a public notice to them, we'll give them a time frame within to come in. If they don't, we'll shut their operations down. The transport landscape in Nigeria, especially in Lagos, is changing fast, breeding greater competition thanks to innovation. But without proper laws, it is not clear if the smart city objective Eileen is meant to drive will arrive its destination. Sarah Ayuku, TVC News, Lagos. Mm -hmm.